All right, I'm Jason. I'm gonna be the nurse today. And first I'm gonna start off with some hand hygiene. I'll apply my gloves. I'm gonna start off the head to toe. Um, first I would start with temperature. So we would assess the baby's temperature. Normal temperature is 97.7 degrees Fahrenheit to 99.0 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's common for babies to have poor thermoregulation. So we do a lot to keep them warm. Um, the baby's posture should be flexed at the elbows, the hips, and the knees. Um, also, in the beginning of the head to toe, um, we would collect the weight on the baby, and the, the weight should be 5.8 ounces, 5 pounds 8 ounces to 8 pounds 13 ounces. So I would do that, and then I would also get a length on the baby. I would measure from head to end of the foot on the side, and then I'd go ahead and assess the skin. Um, I would assess for birthmarks, discoloration. Um, and acrocyanosis is common in um, the hands and the feet. It's just blue coloring of the hands and the feet. Also, vernix and lanugo may be present um, in the baby. And I'd feel the skin. The skin should be soft and flexible, and the hands may be dry and peeling as well as the feet. Let's take a look for the birthmarks. Don't see anything. Um, I'd assess turgor. I would just pinch the skin. It should be elastic and return to normal shape after the pinching. Um, then I would go ahead to the pigmentation. There's, uh, it should be clear. Milia may be present on the bridge of the nose, forehead, or chin. Mongolian blue spots may be present on the buttocks of dark-skinned infants. So. And a newborn rash may be present as well, which is not uncommon. Um, and then I would go ahead to the head. Let me get them off. And I would go ahead and start by measuring head around. base of the head it's backwards but yeah <laughs> it should be between 32 and 37 centimeters and the head is round symmetric and moves easily from left to right and soft and pliable and molding is commonly found in the head so from the pressure coming out of the vagina and then I'd go ahead and start assessing the fontanelles going down should be a soft spot fontanelle here the anterior fontanelle and then Go down to the posterior fontanelle, and slight pulsation may be felt as well as the sutures may overlap. And the hair should have a smooth texture and evenly distributed. And then the face should have symmetric movement of all facial features. There should be a normal hairline, eyebrows, eyelashes, and the eyes and ears are at the same level. The nostril is equal size, each nostril. The cheeks should be full. The lips should be equal on both sides of the midline. And the baby should be making facial grimaces as well. I would go ahead and assess the eyes. The eyes should be bright and clear. It should be even placement, slight stigmas, constant and fixed strabismus, which is um, like pseudo strabismus. It looks like the babies are cross-eyed, but they're not actually cross-eyed just because their muscles aren't developed in their eyes. And the eyes should move in all directions and you should assess the epicanthal folds as well on the inside. Um, the eyelids should be above the pupils but within the iris and there shouldn't be any drooping. I'd go ahead and start uh, assessing the blink reflex. And the baby should blink when the light is shined down under their eyes. Uh, Edithmus or swelling for the first few days of life just resulting from birth. There shouldn't be any lumps or redness. The cornea is clear. Um, the sclera may appear bluish and then turn white. We should also be checking for jaundice or hemorrhage. And if there's green, yellow discharge, that could be an indication for infection. And I'd go ahead and start uh, assess for like perla. Should be equal, round, and reactive to light, the pupils. And lashes should be present. I would uh, go ahead and start assessing the patency by sticking one finger into the mouth and doing each nostril one at a time. Um, assessing the soft and hard palate, the palate should be intact. The baby should be sucking the finger as well when the finger is in the mouth. 
And um, then I would go ahead and assess rooting reflex and the baby should be turning their head when I feel on the side of their face. So each side the baby should be turning their head too when I'm feeling the side of their face. Um, the Epstein pearls may appear on the mucosa, it's common. Um, and the tongue should be free moving and pink as well in color. The ears, when I go ahead and assess the ears, they should be at the same level of the intercanthus of the eye and they should be fully formed. Go ahead and put this thing back on. If I can, I don't know what's going on here. There we go. I'd go ahead and assess the neck. It should be short, straight, creased with skin folds. There shouldn't be any webbing present. There shouldn't be any masses. The clavicle, the collarbone should be straight and intact and trachea should be in midline. And then I would go ahead to the chest. Um, I would measure the chest using the mm, roller measurement, tape measure. That's what it's called. If I can get it underneath the arm. And it should be about one to two centimeters less than the head and I'm measuring below the nipple line as well. And then I could go ahead and assess, the nipple should be symmetrical. Um, the chest, the expansion of the chest should be symmetrical and there shouldn't be any retractions. I'm gonna go ahead and take a listen to the breath sounds. I'm listen for the breath sounds. There shouldn't be any vintage sounds, um, and I may be hearing crackles from the fluid in the lungs as well. I would listen on the sides. And I would take the baby, turn them over, listen on the back side. Like I said, fluid, you may hear crackles from fluid being in the lungs as well. Um, the respiratory rate should be about 30 to 60 breaths per minute. And um, I would assess the respiratory rate watching for expansion for, uh, for a full minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with the heart. I'm gonna auscultate for heart sounds. I'm gonna listen to the apical pulse for a full minute. There shouldn't be any extra heart sounds and there may be some functional murmurs, which are normal. Um, the normal heart rate should be about 110 to 160 beats per minute. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start assessing the abdomen. So um, the appearance of the abdomen should be round. The umbilicus is bluish white color. Um, and assessing the umbilical cord, there should be two arteries and one vein present on the umbilical cord. I'm gonna go ahead and take listen to all the bowel sounds in each of the four quadrants. There should be active bowel sounds in all four quadrants. And then I'm gonna go ahead and feel for the femoral pulses and they should be palpable and equal bilaterally. And I'm just gonna go ahead and listen to the brachial pulses as well. They should be equal, palpable, bilaterally. And when assessing the male genitals, um, I'm gonna palpate the testes and uh, the scrotum may be swollen as well, that's normal in newborns. And then when assessing female genitals, the labia majora should cover the labia minora, and, but it could be inflamed, which is not a normal finding. Uh, the vagina urinary meatus and vaginal orifice are visible with about a 0.5 centimeter circumference. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the infant over and assess the buttocks. The buttocks should be symmetric. I'm gonna stroke the anus and it should be painted. When I stroke, it should look like it's winking at me. So I'm gonna go ahead and start assessing the extremities and trunk. The extremities should move symmetrically and have full range of motion. So I'm gonna assess for range of motion. Uh, but they should not be able to extend fully and they are able to move sporadically. And then I'm gonna start with the Barlow test. 
I'm gonna push the knees up and in, and if uh, it clicks, that means hip dysplasia is present if the, if the hips click when pushing in. And then for Orlani test, I would go out and up using my fingers, and if it clicks, hip dysplasia would be present as well, and it's popping them back in place. Um, assessing the back of the thighs, they should be equal with uh, in length, and the symmetrical folds should be present on the back of the thighs. Assessing the moral reflex, which is the clapping, and the baby's arms should flare out in like a frightening clap. When assessing the Babinski reflex, I go up the foot and the toes should flare out from reflex. And then palmar reflex, I stick my fingers in the hands and they should grasp onto my fingers. And then plantar reflex, I do the same thing with the toes and their toes should grasp onto my fingers. Um, and then assessing the stepping reflex, when holding the baby upright in a walking position, it should be like they would should start making steps appearances, like it should look like they're stepping. And then the tonic neck fencer reflex. It's called the tonic reflex. It's also the basic name is fencer reflex. If I extend one arm out, the knee on the same side should bend in as if they were in a fencing position. And th there shouldn't be any extra appendages and they should be all formed properly. And there shouldn't be any webbing on the hands and the feet of the, like the toes and the fingers. And the, uh, the infant should have normal palmar creases. And then when assessing the spine, the spine should be C-shaped, it should be straight. There may be a close, there should be a closed dimple at the back, base of the back. There should be intact skin, uh, dimpling or tuft of hair at the base. So there may be hair and there should be a dimple at the base. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my baby back wrapped up. For warmth, dispose of my gloves, perform hand hygiene.